One of the things Eric does as he's traveling around the entire world in 30 days is let you know where he is with an establishing shot. Kangaroo Island. An establishing shot can be a wide shot of a room you're in before you cut to a closer shot. Or maybe a drone shot of you sailing near David Copperfield's island before you cut to a shot of you making out with a mermaid next to a stainless steel piano under the sea. Or maybe an animated map showing exactly where you are in the world like Eric has been using in his Around the World series. Let's make an animated map in CapCut just like Eric. By the way, I just got these new computer glasses. Do they work? Is the anti-glare thing working? Are they me? You look like a doofus! <laughs> <laughs> doofus! The first thing we need is a map. So I went into Google Maps and took a screenshot of this section of Florida to the Dominican Republic because we sailed from the DR all the way to Florida in two trips on a broken sailboat. Let's go ahead and add it to the timeline by dragging it to the timeline. I'm gonna hit Shift Z so it fills the entire timeline down here. And then because it's highlighted, I can scale this up a little bit. So bam, right about there. This is the DR and this is Florida. And we landed right here in between Florida and Georgia. Pulling into the US for the first time in Almost, almost three weeks, yikes. You'll notice that I turned the labels off in Google Maps, so this is clean and we can add whatever labels we want on here. Next, we need a red line that goes from Dominican Republic all the way to Florida. I created one for you in Photoshop. You can create this kind of line yourself in something like Photopia or Canva, or you can just download all the elements I use in this tutorial for free using the link in the description. First, we're gonna rotate it so that it goes through Florida and the Dominican Republic, and this is about where we took off and about where we landed, although we did take some detours here, and I'm going to scale it up. Now, I intentionally made this line very long. It's longer than this 16 by 9 screen, so I'm going to scale it up a bunch, and it can handle it. It's pretty high resolution, and that'll give us room to make it move. And we're going to position our playhead at the beginning of the timeline, and we're going to drag this down so that it has a chance to you know kind of kind of do its thing that's probably a good starting point and we're going to change just the position of this line so i'm going to set a keyframe for the position and that set this keyframe right here at the beginning of the timeline because that's where my playhead was and you'll remember that a keyframe marks the beginning or the end of a change in a property and the property we're changing is position next we're going to drag the playhead to the end of the timeline go back one frame so we can see the keyframe when it is placed here and a keyframe will automatically be added here as soon as I drag this line. I want the line to go this way kind of up and to the left so I'm just going to drag it up and to the left about as far as I want it to go and I'm going to go back to the beginning of the timeline and hit play and yeah that's about the speed that I want the line to go that's that's kind of working out. You'll notice that on Airx map he also has this little blue dot that you see on like Apple Maps. So I'm gonna drag this down to the timeline. I made this for you in Photoshop as well. And hey, pretty high resolution, but I'm gonna just scale it down by dragging this corner here. Then I'm going to rotate it by dragging this guy here. And I'm going to scale it down a little more so it's about the right size. The red line indicates the direction we're traveling and this blue dot indicates about where we are at any point in time in our video. So. If you are you know, leaving the DR, you'd have the dot here. And if you're arriving in Florida, you'd have the dot here. Let's say we're in the middle near Turks and Caicos, somewhere down here probably. I'm just going to scale it down a tiny bit more. And the blue dot was moving more slowly than the red line. So let's go ahead and position the playhead at the beginning where I want this to start and set a keyframe for the blue dot by clicking on position and going to the end of the clip, back one frame again. And just we're gonna move it forward just a tiny, tiny bit so that we're moving slowly here, more slowly than the red line. Now, if we go back to the beginning and hit play, we have the red line moving and the blue dot moving more slowly. Looks kind of like Eric's already. The other thing he has is text. So we're just going to go ahead and click on text. And in the add text section, we have all of these possibilities, but here in trending, we have the default text, which is what we usually use. Start with something plain so we can modify it. I'm going to make it the same duration as the entire sequence. And this default text is probably fine. So we're going to Florida and Eric used all lowercase. So we'll use Florida default font, go down to stroke, make it black. It's already black and just adjust the stroke size to maybe around 30. Make this Florida a little bit smaller. 
angle it so it looks kind of more stylized. Then we're going to click on it and drag it over here. Maybe scale it down a tiny bit more like that. That's Florida. Now, because we already have this looking the way we want it, we can just duplicate this text. So to duplicate this text, we go in the timeline, hold down the Option key on a Mac, the Alt key on a PC, and click and drag up. And hey, we have another Florida. Why can't you see it? Because it's right on top of the other one. We're just going to drag it over here so we can see it. We're going to rotate it the other direction. And we could either type DR or Dominican Republic. So let's go Dominican Republic. And then we're just going to position it over here by the DR. And that's kind of big. So we're just going to make it a little bit smaller so it's not so obnoxious. We're pretty close. We want to spice it up a little bit. So we're going to jump over here into Effects. Click on Favorites. Because I have saved this one called Edge Glow. And it's free. It should be in your free version of CapCut. And I'm just going to click and drag it down to the timeline. And it's going to add a glow to the edges of things that have edges. And in our case, we have all of these items, the red line, the blue dot, and the text. I don't really want the blue dot to have that effect, so I'm just going to drag it above the edge glow. And I'm going to drag the edge glow to the end of the sequence here. And now we've got a glow on these, similar to what Eric has, and a glow on the red line. I can adjust it here. And if you don't see the adjustment, it's because you're not clicked on it. So when I click off, oh no, I can't see the ability to adjust it. So I just click on the edge glow and I can jump up here and adjust it. So it looks how I want it to look. So somewhere probably around, I don't know, 25-ish looks pretty good. So now the red line and DR in Florida are glowing, but the blue dot is not. So far it looks like this, which looks pretty great, but Eric has the entire map moving with all of the items on it. Now if we had to manually animate each of these so they stayed in place as the whole thing kind of zoomed in and moved a little bit, that would be tough to do. But there's an easy way. Just select all of the clips in the timeline, right click and choose Create Compound Clip. Now anything I do to this compound clip will affect everything at once so everything moves super easily. Let's go to the beginning of the clip, set a keyframe for position and scale, the two properties we want to modify. This is the beginning of that change in properties. Now we're going to go to the end of the clip and go back one frame. And now we're going to scale up a little bit. And notice as I scale up, look what it did. It, it created a keyframe back here. And I want to maybe move it up to here a little bit. And so now we have keyframes automatically created for scale and position. And that only works when you already have a keyframe set for those properties. You move the playhead and then you change those properties. Another keyframe will automatically be set without having to press these buttons. And now I'm going to click off so I don't have this white line around it. Go to the beginning and what? That looks super pro, don't you think? The reason no one is watching your videos yet is because you haven't implemented the things I've shown you in this video and you struggle with editing. You're still kind of slow. You don't know what buttons to push. You don't even know what your software can do. And when you're stuck just trying to figure out what buttons to push, your creativity goes out the window. What if you could master editing so it just comes naturally. You don't have to think about it. It's just like speaking or walking. I want you to get great at editing, which is why I created my brand new course, Master CapCut. I want you to imagine how it's going to feel after you complete my course and you sit down to edit and you know exactly what to do. That feeling's going to be like, ah! seriously, just go to mastercapcut.com right now or click on this link right here so you can stop wasting your time and get to going viral just like Eric.